prepare to embark on a journey that will leave you breathless and in disbelief that one place can pack in so much. Arresting landscapes, dynamic ecosystems home to majestic giants, and the ever-impactful presence of towering walls of ice. Are you ready to witness the wild and untamed beauty of Kenai Fjords National Park, a corner of planet Earth only accessible from the sea? Jump aboard and come along with us. It's a quiet and drizzly summer morning here in Seward, Alaska. We're about to set sail and we're not alone. We're joined by our nephew Anthony, our friend Dave, and also our new friends Fefa, Luis, and little Leo, fellow bus lifers who also live full-time in their schooling. We're all excited for today, but not a single one of us is truly prepared for what we're about to see out there. 75, welcome aboard. Thank you. Hi there. Good morning. Okay, I got you. I got you. Gotta give him about an hour to wake up. <laughs> Tia Cora and Anthony here, and we are super excited about this tour, aren't we? We are about to enter the waters of Resurrection Bay, named in the 1700s when Russian sailors sought shelter here around Easter Sunday during a brutal storm in the Gulf of Alaska. Our immediate sighting of sea otters seems to bode well for today's wildlife encounters. Who else will we meet as we venture out into the wilderness? But like I said, I can't stop here. It is in the middle of the channel here. Look at this. Look at on that left hand side, you can see him. Right right so cute! <laughs> I'm gonna cruise by slowly. I'll see if I can find He's another sleeping? one. He's sleeping. What's up, bro? Don't wake him up. He's sleeping. where we are headed. Kenai Fjords National Park covers 1,047 square miles of Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. Among that wild expanse, only one tiny area has road access and maintained trails. The rest is an untamed land dominated by the sea, the fjords, and ice. And the only way to catch a glimpse of that majesty is from the water. As we make our way farther into Resurrection Bay, we catch more glimpses of what's to come. Kenai Fjords National Park is home to about 30 land mammals, 10 marine mammals, 200 species of birds, and 40 species of fish. This side of the bay is dominated by soft, erodible rock constantly being shaped by water, both falling from above and beating away at the base. At first, we were a little disappointed by today's weather, but now, we see the beauty in it. The mist and the fog create an atmosphere that strikes a certain chord. Mysterious, wistful, and epic in a way no bright sunny day can compete with. The landscape is both familiar and foreign to us. It is almost like a marriage between the rocky coast of Maine and the mystical mountains of southern China where we met. We round a rocky curve, and there they are. Oh. Oh. Wow. Wow. And then we have no. a oh my gosh, see more right there. You see them? Yep. We, we already saw three animals on one day. Yeah. Look, there they are. Oh, it's coming for air. Yeah. Oh, oh Oh, 
Nothing quite prepares you for seeing orcas in the wild. Three types of orcas can be seen in the waters surrounding Kina Fjords. Residents, transients, and offshores. Residents feed primarily on fish and have a range spanning at least 800 miles, while transients primarily prey on marine mammals and have a range of at least 1,500 miles. Harder to spot, the offshores inhabit the open ocean and their diet varies by the pod. Orcas are highly intelligent beings with complex social structures. Pods are multi-generational matriarchal societies, each with learned hunting behavior and distinct language patterns like dialects, passed down through the generations. To see them in the wild is a gift of gifts. It seems the orcas were our welcoming committee, ushering us into their home. We now realize that the ride here was just a prelude. The rocky shore just keeps getting more and more beautiful. The geology and the flora and the fauna come together to put on quite a show. Before long, we see another resident of the Kenai Fjords, stellar sea lions. Stellar sea lions are the largest of the eared seal family. Females can reach up to nine and a half feet long and 800 pounds, and males can reach up to 11 feet long and 2,500 pounds. The sites where they rest, often snuggling close together, are called haulouts. It's also safer up there as they are one of the prey of the region's transient orcas. We leave the sea lions to rest and continue our journey, all the while gawking at the staggering beauty of this coastline. Little do we know what's about to happen. We are now here, just about to round the outermost reaches of Ialic Cape. Separated in Resurrection Bay and Ialic Bay, Ialic Cape is made up of granitic rock, which is tough and greatly resists erosion. This strength makes for striking cliffs and a safe haven for seabirds. But even the strongest rocks eventually yield to the pounding waves. This is a place shaped by the unrelenting and powerful force of the sea. We just round Ayala Cape when our lucky stars strike again. Humpback whales are gentle giants of the sea, reaching up to 60 feet long and weighing up to 40 tons. They are known for one of their most incredible practices, to sing. Humpbacks are travelers who migrate thousands of miles between their winter breeding and summer feeding grounds. The whales that come to Kenai Fjords travel from Hawaii and Mexico, and they are here to eat. Humpbacks are baleen whales. Their upper jaw holds 400 baleen plates made from keratin like our fingernails. Up to 500 gallons of seawater is brought into the mouth, aided by a set of expanding throat grooves, then the tongue pushes the water through the baleen like a sieve, trapping a nice gulp of prey behind. Demonstrating their high social intelligence, humpbacks are known for a cooperative hunting tactic that is a spectacle unlike any other. Right now, the group is below the surface, creating an ever-tightening curtain of air bubbles around their catch. Now that their prey is focused in one area, the whales will drive straight up through the bubble net and... We leave the humpbacks behind to feed. They need to eat as much as they can, about a ton of food per day, so that they can make the long journey to Hawaii or Mexico, where they'll have their babies in warmer, shallower waters. We are now headed straight into Ialic Bay, and an astute little kid among us notices a very important change. It's getting colder and colder. It's getting colder and colder. 
The moody interplay of the mist and the trees and this rugged wild coastline, it just keeps getting more and more epic. The clouds and the mist also keep what lies ahead hidden from view, but we can feel it. And just like that, there it is. About 50% of Kenai Fjords National Park is covered in ice. That is because it is home to the Harding Ice Field, which blankets 700 square miles of the Kenai Peninsula. At least 38 glaciers are fed by the ice field, oozing down and through the surrounding mountainsides. Holgate Glacier is one of them. What do you think, Anthony? When a glacier flows all the way to the sea, it is called a tidewater glacier. When large chunks of tidewater glaciers calve and fall into the sea, they form icebergs, a term which is often confused with sea ice. In contrast to the glacial origin of icebergs, sea ice is formed when the seawater itself freezes. Glaciers may look static, but they are anything but. They are dynamic beasts of nature. In fact, glaciers like Holgate are responsible for carving the landscape we have been venturing through today. When glacially carved valleys are flooded with water, we call those valleys fjords. Can you cut it nice? Yeah, it's a piece of the glacier. I will find harbor seals. They can um, use the ice as protection. Let's go that way since the captain's not going this way. You should have been at the stern when you were Yes, very heavy. Okay, come over here, guys. Come okay. Here. Now, come right here. Okay, you come on this side of me. Come on this side of me. Over here. And you get up on that bench. Go stand up right there. Go ahead. Stand up. There you go. There you Grab it. Okay, grab that. Ready, grab, it, grab it. Grab it. Okay, three, two, one. Push it, push it, push it. Push it. Oh. <laughs> it is profoundly humbling to be face to face with such a powerful giant of the natural world. All glaciers are incredible to see, but there is something truly awe-inspiring about gazing up at the towering, jagged face of a tidewater glacier. We say goodbye to Holgate Glacier and head back into Ialic Bay, the air getting warmer and warmer by the minute. We island hop for a bit, and the fjords seem to send us off with a cascade of beautiful moments. lucky enough to see orcas again, and the crew even pulls a sea creature encrusted helmet from the water. They think it might be from Japan. Since the last massive tsunami, debris has been drifting over for years. We are now headed to Fox Island, one of the most prominent and famous features of Resurrection Bay. Jose and I have been looking out at this island for a while, so we're fascinated to finally be going there. Along the way, the land presents us with an almost textbook step-by-step -step lesson on how the most unique features of this coastline form, caves, arches, and sea stacks. When a rocky cliff juts into the sea, any weak point can eventually erode to a sea cave. The unrelenting pounding of waves on both sides of the cliff can eventually turn that cave into an arch. And when it finally collapses, a sea stack is born. We see examples of these three coastal features 
everywhere. Here, the perfect conditions exist for their formation. The rocky capes and headlands of the Kenai Fjords jut straight into the sea, unprotected and exposed to the full force of the North Pacific. Before we know it, we're pulling in to dock at Fox Island. really cool to be out here after so many times seeing it from the distance and never being out here. This is pretty cool. After a full day at sea, we are hungry. So our whole group tucks in for a delicious meal, which of course includes a very common dish here in Alaska. Visitors to Alaska can expect to eat a lot of wild salmon. It's not just that it's so popular, it's also what everyone just has a lot of, as we will come to understand better in a future episode. That's two! Oh, Glacier Explorer! Thank you. Thank you! Thank you! What a day it has been. The return to Seward goes by in a daze. At the end of experiences like this, one needs some time to absorb it all. Orcas, humpbacks, sea otters, sea lions, glaciers, and jaw-dropping natural beauty. All in one day, in one little sliver of the coastline surrounding Kenai Fjords National Park. Gratitude is the word. Gratitude for the opportunity to see this place and to experience it with family and friends. Now our exploration of Kenai Fjords National Park is about to reach another level. We just visited one of the park's glaciers. Now this ambitious crew is embarking on a mission to not just see another, but also to witness with our own eyes the source of it all, the Harding Ice Field. We're headed there now, and you're coming to next time on Art We Buried. Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art We Buried journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.